everything that the marketer meetup does has been accumulation of those 1% changes, even to the point of like, in our email out to the community, we'll say, hey, Peter, you... You're listening to the Marketing Study Lab podcast with me, Peter Sumpton, the Lego master of marketing, providing you the building blocks you need to be successful with your marketing. This intro lasts about a minute, so feel free to skip forward if you've heard it all before. It's nothing new. So what's this podcast all about? We chat to some amazing people to give you practical advice that you can implement right now that will make your marketing truly awesome. The conversations we have will lead you to the actionable marketing knowledge you've been craving. Just a quick word about supporting the show. The best way to do this is to leave a five-star Apple podcast review. It helps me get the best guests and helps others find the podcast. All I want to do is help people get the best out of their marketing. If you've got a burning marketing question right now, let's chat it through. All the links you need to contact me are in the show notes, because let's face it, you ain't writing anything down right now. Now let's get on with introducing our guest. Well, this is a first for Marketing Study Lab. We've, um, We've run out of guests. No, 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 of course we haven't. But over the next three episodes, we'll be chatting to some familiar faces. So let's meet our first two-timer, Mr. Joe Glover, the founder of the Marketing Meetup, amongst other things. I'm delighted to welcome Joe back to the show after initially appearing on episode 96, where we discussed what it takes to put on amazing events. But what happens when you can't put those events on anymore? When circumstances out of your control determine that your whole business model is thrown out of the window. Joe had a decision to make. Does he pause what he's been building over the past few years through the marketing meetup? Or does he look for other ways to provide value to his thriving community? It wouldn't be much of a podcast if it was the pause option, would it? So it's obvious that he's built something fantastic and amazing. So what does this look like though? And how do you transition from what is seen as a threat to your business model to generating opportunities to be even better than before? Well, in this episode, we chat about the first thing we do when circumstances change, transitioning from offline to online events, and what is needed to do this both emotionally and physically. And it might be a bit of a surprise to some people what we chat about there. But first, I need Joe's help in giving me a solution to the lack of sport we have now. Joe, please tell me you've got some ideas. Uh, (laughs) Well, I'd like to say that we're both lovers of the beautiful game, but your love is misdirected. Um, (laughs) Uh, It's going to be one of those episodes, is it? (laughs) (laughs) It most certainly will be. Um, But in any case, uh, to your question, um, can you brief, uh, can I? for a solution to lack of sport uh playing sport now we're allowed uh to to head out so uh, me and the wife have been uh taking a football down to the park with the dog and uh kicking that around which has been good fun um or oh, just plenty of fifa like <laughs> esports like I, i've been absolutely i've never played so much fifa in my entire life but uh my team is looking ridiculous right now um, <laughs> brilliant I, I would say that esports probably has done a terrible job during this time because i okay. would have thought that this has been their time to shine and mm. i haven't seen anything wow i don't i don't know whether that's that's uh um whether that's on purpose or what's happened but i would have thought esports should have shone a lot more in these past two months yeah so, good uh, point. yeah but Very uh, good yeah, point. play sports okay excellent just f- finally on that piece of, of knowledge when you kick that football in the park in your brain who are you <laughs> you know what one of my biggest memories is as uh being in the school playground and it was uh the week after jamie redknapp scored directly from a corner i think okay and that's such a bad memory because obviously redknapp was a liverpool player at the time so 
So um, I'm not going to say him. Uh, my dog is named after Eric Cantona. So uh, I'm, I'm going to go for Cantona. Although, okay. um, although I would add that I've never been a, a glorious striker. I've always been an industrious centre half um, who uh, specialises more in, in getting in the way of things rather than, uh, than, than playing the beautiful game beautifully <laughs> yeah me, me, me and you both yeah getting in the way is the is the right word there absolutely <laughs> um, oh, okay joe moving swiftly on to, to like marketing things which i suppose people are tuning in to, to listen to that that'd be helpful so the reason that I, I asked you back on and thank you so much for doing it is first of all can you briefly explain what you've been up to in the past few months and then we can dive into some actionable tips as to what you've been up to in the past few months and how that's worked. Of course. Uh, so for those of you who aren't familiar at all, um, I run something called the Marketing Meetup. Um, I won't go into what it is in this episode because I think we've spent enough time covering that sort of stuff in the previous episode and it's fairly easy to find it online. Um, but in effect, we run events for marketers and that's the, that's the short story. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to COVID starting, we we just sort of found a real sort of sense of momentum. We were supposed to be running 140 events this year in person, and we just started in New York in April, no, February. <laughs> so wow. like, yeah, so we'd started in the UK four years ago, and we just started branching out into New York and the States and stuff like that, and then boom, COVID hit, um, which. You know, we are far from victims of, of coronavirus. There are far worse people who have been impacted it by it in far more meaningful ways than we have been. Uh, but the direct impact was that, for us at least, we had to cancel our, all of our events. So that was 140 events across 14 <laughs> locations, what, 14 events a month, um, because we have two months off. Um, gone, done. Um, that was... That was scary. I'm a year into being a founder. Um, the marketing meetup has been running for four, but three of those were as a hobby. Mm. Um, so when it became clear that we weren't going to be able to run in-person events, then it was, you know, it was about taking the next step. It was about figuring out what we could do to to make things uh, sustainable to continue working with our business. Um, I was probably spent about four or five days just feeling really, really sad actually mm. about having to cancel the events. Um, and I allowed myself that time as well because I've been working hard for the past four years to, to create this into a business, into a community. And uh, that was in its, in its present form at the time, that was gone. Um, anyway, after those four days had, had sort of gone by, I, I sort of decided that the greatest freedom that we have as humans is the ability to react to the situations that are put before us. So I spent my Saturday and my Sunday doing two things. Uh, the first was learning the hell out of Zoom <laughs> and how to use it. Um, and also researching lots of sort of like webinar uh, platforms and that kind of thing. Um, but then the second was getting in touch with the most famous marketers and non-marketers that I could think of just to say, Hey, we're trying to do something for this amazing community. We can't do it in person anymore, but would you like to get involved in a webinar? Um, I think my exact words were something to the effect of there are a lot of scared people out there right now, but hopefully we can give them something to look forward to. Mm. Um, and wonderfully we had a series of people, uh, say yes so over the course of the last eight weeks we've moved our business away from in-person offline events to purely online uh, we've done this in two different formats we've had webinars which have been attended by up to 800 people at a time um, and then you know with an additional several thousand sort of engaging in the podcast or, or the youtube videos and then secondly, also a format which uh, replicates networking. So that's called Conversation Club. And that was um, a, a format where people can come in and just have a really an opportunity to chat with other marketers. 
So yeah, these past eight weeks have been crazy. I mean, we had an unbelievable sense of momentum in the in-person in-person events heading into the to the crisis. Um, but now we've built an incredible sense of momentum online instead, which uh, has been hard work, um, but also a lot of fun and will be something that after Corona's finished, you know, hopefully if that day comes, then um, we'll continue doing with our business after after it's all done, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's, it's a really interesting case study and I, I use it in workshops and I, I proudly tell people about it because <laughs> I, I think you've done an excellent job in 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 utilizing what's available to provide the best solution at this moment to to your community and um, what i'd like to get across today for people listening is just some some actionable tips actionable steps when the shit hits the fan so to speak <laughs> uh, so yeah. so the, the first thing would be when when your external circumstances change change when things that you cannot um have an impact on uh, change, but you have to change within it. What's the first thing mm-hmm. you should do? So I, I know you had, it took a moment of, of reflection or a couple of days. Is that the first thing people mm-hmm. should do? Or should they just run around like headless chickens pressing loads <laughs> of buttons and hopefully some <laughs> of those buttons are the right ones? <laughs> I, I, I think you, you've nailed it in, in the sense there that uh, you can't really help how you react to things in the first instance necessarily. Um, but I think it is important to allow yourself that opportunity to have that reaction and um, examine it and, and, and figure out why you're feeling what you're feeling. Um, for me, I probably had the benefit of a, a small amount of time because events were one of the first things to go when coronavirus struck. So even when I did what I did, I was probably two weeks ahead of the curve in terms of mm. uh, everyone else starting to work from home and, and, and that kind of stuff. So I did have the benefit of a little bit of time. So I was able to examine those feelings. Um, But then the second thing is that sort of going back to that quote, that you do have the ability to, at some point, you know, after you've worked through those initial feelings, choose how you respond to something. That is a freedom that ultimately nobody can take from you, that you can choose your reaction to certain circumstances. So um, for me, that was probably reverting to my default personality type, which is just one of sort of general proactivity and one of looking to help people. And that came through in the message that I sent through to the speakers, but also the act of even getting in touch with the speakers. So I think there's a recognition of how you're feeling right now. There's a recognition of the problem, but then there's also a stage which is like, okay, there's this problem. What can we do to solve it? And uh, ultimately it's, it's, I think one of the greatest things that I've ever, uh, or one of my sort of superpowers, I guess, is a sense of agency, which is that I control my own fate. Mm. And even though these things can happen externally, uh, taking the responsibility upon myself to say, okay, it might have changed externally, but this is for me to now solve. I think that's the type of thing that makes a huge difference. Yeah, that that's really cool. Taking that that area of responsibility and 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 just seeing that that there are different ways of doing things, and sometimes it does take that circumstance that is completely out of your control to to get you to do that first step to have mm-hmm. that conversation with yourself to work out what is the best route forward. So all this happened, and you had to go from in person events to purely an online offering. So what, what stages did you, what practical stages did you take to get to say that first online event? So there was, I guess there was a few. So I've already mentioned the, the examination of platforms. Uh, so for me, it was quite clear that Zoom was going to be the best platform that I could use. Uh, the reason for that was that it had the functionality, but also the stability that I needed. Um, I did look at stuff like uh, Livestorm, I think it's called. Um, which would have been a good webinar platform, but I knew that I wanted the the networking sort of scenario to continue mm. existing. And uh, Zoom has a great breakout rooms functionality in Zoom meetings, which enabled us to be able to do a conversation club too. Uh, there was also the issue of the people, as in who we were going to get to come and speak. And I became very aware early on that 
the differentiation between online events and offline events was going to be fairly small. So one of the things that was going to be really important was the caliber of speaker that we got coming along. So it was important that we got that level of people coming too. Uh, thirdly, there was something about the positioning of the packages. So rather than just saying uh, networking group, we decided to call it conversation club. Now that's a stupid thing in many ways, but it's also a very relevant thing because that moves it away from just like bareface networking or come along and speak with people. <laughs> so like, okay, I've got a thing which I can hang. I know what this thing is every week that's happening. It's conversation club, which is not a great name, but what it says what it does on the tin and mm. that kind of builds that sort of association. So there's almost like a branding piece there, I guess. That's probably where I'm coming to with that. Um, and then finally, there was, there was um, the marketing of the events. So one of the things that we, um, you know, <laughs> the, we had our marketing somewhat curtailed in, in a sense, because one of our biggest channels was A, going to be word of mouth, or B, uh, was going to be from one event to another. So at the end of the Manchester Marketing Meetup, as an example, we can say, the next event will be here. And, uh, you know, you'd immediately get 50 or 60 signups on the day uh, that sort of say, yeah, we're going to be here for next month. But obviously that's not going to happen anymore. So, so we uh, had to sort of get a bit more inventive. I, I think we'll probably end up speaking a little bit more about communication later mm. on. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. I, I, won't, I won't jump ahead. Uh, there's, there's one thing that I just wanted to, to pick up on there. You said the calibre of speaker. Uh, yeah. was, it, was it always an intention or... or... It was the almost a, a flick of a switch, a light bulb moment that these these people, the chances of these people traveling a long distance from different countries or, or, or whatever, take Mark Ritson, for example, who lives in Tasmania, you know, the chance of him flying over <laughs> to give a, a, a 30 minute speech at, at the marketing meetup, regardless of how excellent <laughs> those um, those meetups are, is very slim. Yeah. So was it an opportunity to, to, to get that caliber? For sure. You know, I, I think... Um, you have to caveat everything at the moment and sort of mm. say that we'd all much rather this situation not be happening. Um, but there was most certainly an opportunity there. Um, my, when I sort of mentioned all this to my mum and what was happening, then she sort of said that I was channeling my granddad a little bit in the sense that he uh, was was just very, this is a, a terrible term and, and, and forgive me for using it, but you know, it's probably it's, it's what she used. Um, she said that he was just very ballsy you know, and in, in anything that he chose to do, you know, he would always uh, just pursue it very doggedly. And, and um, I, th I think maybe for that weekend alone, I, I would probably channel my granddad a little bit, which was just like, if this thing's going to be crap, uh, if this situation's going to be crap, then uh, let's try and make it the best of it. So uh, that's probably the reason why I ended up getting in touch with those folks. That, that's cool um and you've just gone a little bit cooler in my ex expectations as well that's fantastic um i love, <laughs> I, I, I love anything like that really good stuff. um so, so yes so, so moving on to to the actual infrastructure of, of, of what these these events and, and how you build up to them look like any mm -hmm. changes in i know you mentioned one in terms of people sign up straight away so what's that looking like in the changes you have to implement to get people to, to sign up and, and to remember to, to actually turn up as well mm -hmm. so uh infrastructurally then our two main channels at the moment are email marketing and um my linkedin personal brand uh, more than anything um this is presented this has been great in a way um, but it's also presented as a challenge because I am very, very conscious that I don't want to be beating those drums so hard that eventually people just start drowning them out. Mm. So it's been a real balance in terms of making sure that our communication has been um, on point, really, and, and sort of just interesting that people want to continue to engage with it. Um, in terms of the website, previously a lot of our event signups took up took place via meetup.com. Uh, we moved this to our website, which has actually been brilliant. So year on year, the marketing meetup website traffic is something like 4,000% up or something like that. Wow. Um, so, and that's because we moved um, all our events signups onto that page. So, you know, 
that's that's been great so you know you can go to the marketingmeetup.com forward slash events and you'll see the list whereas previously you had to go to the respective location pages to see when the next event was closer to you type of thing and so that's been great sorry sorry joe do you think you'll one maintain that and two we're using a particular software a plugin like how did that come about for sure so um Yes, we'll definitely continue that because <laughs> that's been great. 4,000%, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, in all seriousness, that's that's also brilliant for the sponsors because they get more exposure on the website as well, which means it's, a, it's another channel for them to get exposure, which means that for us, our revenue becomes more secure. Um, the second part of that question um, would be, Sorry, could you just remind me of the second Yeah, part of the absolutely. So, so you're gonna you're gonna maintain keeping it on the site, and and rightly so. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you? What kind of uh, software is is behind the scenes? Is it like a plugin, or or is there something? It's janky as anything. So uh, mm -hmm. I've just got uh, a table which I've HTML coded myself, um, which is just a table row after table row with a, a redirect link at the end of it to uh, to the re respective sign up pages it, it's shanky but it works um so <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, to be honest, it doesn't need to be more complicated than that does it <laughs> so. absolutely yeah absolutely 100 percent. and i think some people overcomplicate it they are, or, or they look for that quick fix and mm -hmm. doing those two things you can either lose your audience because it becomes too confusing um or so. because you've got that quick fix you're never truly in control of it so it. It, you know it, it makes it makes perfect sense plus you've always got to look at it from the customer's point of view and 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 i can i can tell you as a consumer of mm -hmm. um the martin meetup that you can't tell that from going on that page <laughs> that's good <laughs> that's good to know i mean so one thing that i have learned um is that the way that so i built the marketing meetup website myself uh, just using divi and um the one thing I've learned about the site over this period is that it caches itself really, really hard. Mm -hmm. So any changes that I made to the website, like the first few weeks, people were coming up to me saying, oh, I can't find this. I can't find that. And it's like every time I have to empty the cache on my site, otherwise uh, those changes just aren't reflected um, mm -hmm. elsewhere. That's like a really nerdy marketing thing, but like um, it's the type of thing which like, absolutely makes a huge difference in terms of how people engage with these sites so 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 important to be looking at yeah. that kind of thing if, if you don't know what caching is it's like check check it out because it is hugely important and that that links quite nicely onto something you you were previously saying about a conversation club um for, yes. for me and i'm saying this more and more to, to marketers it's all about that one percent and and yeah mm -hmm. calling it conversation club that a tiny little thing that tiny little one percent of the overall marketing meetup but you start adding those one percents up and it starts mm -hmm. to make a huge difference and not many people do that or they don't they, they don't give it the consideration it deserves to move those one percent mm -hmm. they always look at the how can we move this 50 percent and in doing that you're missing the big picture yeah absolutely i i think um rory sutherland says it best when he he says sweat the small things and mm -hmm. i think it's so so true that um everything that the marketer me does has been accumulation of those one percent changes even mm -hmm. to the point of like in our email out to the community we'll say hey peter you extraordinary dragon or something like that as our as our salutation or, or you know something that's just like a little bit different but also like really positive and unique and and, and will make grab people's attention mm -hmm. yeah, i mean that's that's how our brand voice is but like uh, another example would be signing off the email with love rather than kind regards, mm. you know, and, and it's just like these 1% that like I get emails now and I've had a few people do LinkedIn statuses, which is like, Oh, I love the marketing meetup. And now they say uh, hello at the beginning of their emails. And <laughs> it's like, that's, that's not anything particularly crazy. It's another 10 seconds thought, but mm. it's the type of thing that does add up for sure. So I'm definitely with you. Yeah, be memorable uh, as well. You know, it's be different, be memorable. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, sure. Links nicely onto actually communicating with your audience. So you did a lot of communication through digital platforms. 
uh, beforehand. Mm. I, I know that, but did this, this did this change at all? Did did the tone, did the the style, or anything like that, or, or, or the the communication? How often you communicated? Did anything like that change? Um, yeah. So I think to start off with, then um, everything was kind of about empathy. It was about making sure everyone was okay. Um, you know, people weren't necessarily in a good headspace as as a collective society. I think we're all like a little bit worried, a little bit unsure what's going on, uh, that kind of thing. You know, and 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 you saw a lot of that. You know, everyone started doing it like two or three weeks later. You know, with the "we're there for you" and stuff like that. <laughs> but like, I, I think that it was the right thing to do was just take your foot off the gaff and uh, gaff gas and uh just just check in with people as 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 humans first mm. so as an example um one of the wednesday at two so every every wednesday at two o'clock we send an email to the whole community uh and usually they're either very informative or very irreverent um in the sense that you know we've rick rolled our entire audience we've sent a message from Sean Paul to the community and stuff like that. But like, I'm, I'm going to have to link to that now, aren't I? I've, I've got to, I've got to <laughs> have to link to that. It's like the greatest email I've ever done. I, I, was, I was actually secretly proud of that. But like <laughs> one, one week we used that opportunity in the Wednesday to literally to send an email, which was, hey, Peter, how are you? And then uh, I think the, the third line was something like, honestly please do reply we're here we're there for you mm. uh, love joe and that was it that was the whole email that there was no like you know fancy nurse there was no links etc cetera, etc cetera. um but what i had for the next day and a half was about 400 emails from folks in the community coming back to me and saying actually i'm okay or actually i'm really sad mm. and i don't know what i'm doing right now and 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 this is scary and stuff like that and we reply to them all and yeah. you know we either reply to them all either in email form or with a personalized video you know and it's not the type of thing that like i shout about and, and stuff like that but i think it just goes back to having that genuine concern and authenticity and and sort of empathy and it's a shame because when we have these discussions about marketing and we work use words like vulnerability authenticity and empathy um they immediately get relegated to like buzzword status mm. um but when you take them back to their true meaning and and, and it's just like a a genuine human to human concern for one another uh, i think we demonstrated that in those moments which is why people have continued to be on that journey with us now mm. absolutely and uh, I'm still waiting for the personalised video from the CEO of Sainsbury's to to land in my inbox to say that he really cares that I haven't bought my half pound of ham this week. And don't worry, we're, we're, we're opening more lines to to take care of you, Peter. You know, but I'm still waiting for that. That's it. I know it's mad. You know, I mean, those emails which you know are subjected with a message from the CEO just absolutely kill me because they're doing the opposite of what they need to right now, which is. Mm -hmm reassuring or, or showing a bit of personality or humility i would say that all that empathy uh, authenticity and vulnerability that that was kind of like the first phase i would kind of say that we're like now in like a second or third sort of phase of this sort of covid reaction where you know people were first people were first scared and now they're so, they settled and now they're kind of like settled slash restless to sort of get back to a, a semblance of normality mm. um so with all of that i think comes a change in the tone of your messaging as well uh so while i don't think now is the time for humor i do think we're allowed to have a little bit more fun mm -hmm. um which i do think there's a, a line between the two of them um but i think that's that's important point to make now that i think there is a bit more freedom to kind of just yeah a little bit closer to to normal communication and, and sort of still have fun but um, mm. a bit more normal 
And if you're not signed up to, to the marketing meetup emails, please do so, even if it's just for the little gift that is usually part of that email, because <laughs> uh, Joe loves a, a good gift, and uh, rightly so. <laughs> Absolutely. It's an important part. Yeah, definitely. 1%. Absolute one percent. Um, so, so, so just mo- moving back to to a bigger picture, then mm. uh, just a couple more questions with with a few actionable tips on um, this first one. Uh, how do you prevent yourself not just hitting that big red panic button? I, I guess that uh, panic button is going to look different to everybody, right? Mm, so yeah. for me, so for me, if if my panic button. I don't know what that would have looked like, to be honest, because uh, truthfully, people have been so kind about how we reacted to stuff. But on one level, I can't see how we could have reacted any differently other than uh, laying over and dying. Not mm-hmm. not in a physical sense. And and, and please don't take that as a, <laughs> a slight on, on everything that's going on right now. But, um, you know, in, in terms of uh, in the business world then, you know, rather than shutting the doors, it was like, okay, what are we going to do about this situation? So I think, um, as I say, my my immediate reaction to all of this was sadness and and uh, the feeling lethargic and, and not wanting to do anything and, and just staring blankly at my screen and all those things. Um, but I just took the time to examine those emotions, uh, feel okay that that was what was happening and uh sort of bled them of their power over me through through internal inspection and when those feelings didn't have the power which they did over me then i was able to act with a clear mind and and do something about it in a productive way um panic doesn't really help anyone anywhere Mm. anytime so if you're able to bleed panic of of its power over you, then uh, then you can start acting pro- productively. Let's fast forward to 12, 18, 24 months, however long a time you 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 want to to consider. Uh, and I suppose two things for me really. One, how would the marketing meetup look in a, a year or two years time? And I'm not talking about global domination or anything like that. I'm just <laughs> talking about what you've implemented now, what you previously had, yeah. and is it going to be a mixture of the two or however, what, mm-hmm. what do you feel that would look like? And then secondly, how can we better prepare for change or how would you better prepare for change for things that are out of your control? Mm-hmm. Um, so for the marketing meetup, I think we'll be taking uh, a lot of inspiration from this time and, and definitely continuing with the digital element of it. I don't think we'll go digital for every event because there's mm. just so many of them that it would kind of, I still want an event to feel like an event, mm-hmm. you know, rather than just something else that's happening that day of the week. Um, so for that reason, we'll probably pick and choose the stuff that we go digital with, but where we were put, uh, just offline before now, now we'll start to bring in online elements. So that's been great. In terms of preparing for change, it's an interesting thing because I guess change comes in many forms, right? Mm. And, and without knowing what that change is going to be, then it's quite difficult to prepare for that thing. That being said, I, I guess there's there's frameworks which one can develop, which gives yourself the opportunity to reflect and, and adapt to situations. And then the second bit of that is also our values. You know, I mean, if, if we've got, if we're cognizant of the things that matter to us and, and the reasons why we're doing things, then that gives us a compass to make decisions quite quickly. You know, mm. so for me, um, even though the marketing meetup is an events company, it's hitting a, bro- a broader purpose of spreading kindness in the world. And I don't say that as like some knobhead thing that you, you put on the wall or whatever, you know, like genuinely the thing that, you know, if I was to die tomorrow, I would want people to think that I'd, you know, spread a little bit of kindness and and left that in them, you know, that they mm-hmm. felt kinder for having met me. So, um, 
the reason why that's useful is that when you come to a situation for change, you're able to say, okay, if that's the number one thing that's most important to me, how are we going to do that new thing? How are we going to do that thing in this new scenario? Mm. So you, you gain that compass and, and that's not a, that's not something that is a short process necessarily, but it's certainly a useful one to, uh, to negotiate these periods of change. Cool. Like it. Are you ready for some quick fire questions then? Sure thing. Yeah, sounds good. Aces, right. <laughs> What's that source of info you can't live without? <laughs> I'm going to say that this is so bad, but like I spend so long digesting content with the marketing media that it's the one place where, <laughs> <laughs> where, so I'm sorry, but that is the number one place for me because I spend so long. Um, mm-hmm. If I was to point to another one, then um, I on my dog walks every day, then I'll, I'll usually be listening to an audio book of some form. So cool. Uh, the one I've just finished is Rework by David Heinemeyer Hansen and um, Man's Search for Meaning by Victor E. Frankel, which sounds very deep. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it is, but it's a bloody good book. So <laughs> definitely recommend it. Aces. Who's that one guest you haven't yet had at a marketing meetup? Yeah, uh, it's Seth. Seth, Seth Godin's the, the white whale and uh, it might happen one day. There's, there's, a, there's a whisper. Yeah, brilliant. Cool. Love it. We want that whisper to get a bit louder. So if anyone's <laughs> got any contacts out there, you know, shout out. <laughs> <laughs> um, name your one go-to marketing channel. Uh, LinkedIn is my number one. It's been kind to me. Um, mm-hmm. It's been hard work over four years building an audience and, and stuff like that and it's been very much value led but it's an upside down social media network at the moment mm. in the way that while everyone else is cutting reach linkedin is still giving it away like sweets so uh yeah i think it's a golden opportunity right now cool what's the most important thing to know about marketing right now um fundamentally it hasn't changed marketing is still the same thing it is uh, for me, at least, you know, you, you define marketing by uh, meeting the needs of the customer. And it's just the needs that have changed right now. It's not marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, I would go one step further, which has been a recent development in my thinking, however, that marketing is not only meeting the needs of the customer, but we can also be taking a leadership role in the world um, and sort of defining a change that we want to make in the world and actually marketing that change so uh i I think uh, that's also important oh like it excellent so joe final question most important one uh if people want to find out more about yourself get involved with the marketing meetup which of course they should do if they're not already uh where are you pointing (laughs) them where should they go uh the marketing meetup.com or uh, find me on linkedin at joe glover joe Thank you so, so much for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. And you have the title of being the first guest with a second <laughs> podcast. For two interview. hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, shush. Thank you. Take care, mate. Thank you very much. Joe, thank you so, so much for joining me again on the Marketing Study Lab podcast fantastic way to kick off these few episodes where we invite a couple of guests back to provide some actionable marketing knowledge. My takeaways from my chat with Joe are this, that it's okay to go through the stages that changes bring in your own time, as you need to be in the right frame of mind to tackle what needs to be done. Joe spent some time coming to terms with basically needing to change his whole business model But when ready, he created something that was even better than before. If the poop hits the fan, you need to gather your thoughts and start to take actionable steps to resolve these issues. Consider things like software and hardware that's required. What can you bring across from what you're currently doing? What needs tweaking? And what needs completely changing? Look at technology and how this can be utilized to offer better services. And finally, don't forget the marketing comms. The final takeaway I want to point out here is look for opportunities. 
Joe took his sign-up functionality from an external source to having full control of the process, which meant he was more in control, he could change it as often as he wanted, he wasn't getting charged for the privilege. So where can you bring something in-house to make your customer journey even better? Thank you so much for joining us today on Marketing Study Lab. It really means the world that you're listening to this out there. And hopefully I've provided you some value. If you're looking to know more about what Marketing Study Lab does and is about, go to marketingstudylab.co.uk or get in touch with me personally, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, or feel free to email me at peter at marketingstudylab.co.uk. Happy marketing.